Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. Today is Tuesday, October 3rd. Thank you so much for joining me on this lovely afternoon. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. We're getting started here with Tropical Storm Philippe, who just continues to look worse and worse as time goes on. We had quite a tremendous amount of thunderstorm activity work their way through the Lesser Antilles, both Leeward and Windward Islands, dropping a high amount of rainfall. I'm talking a tremendous amount of rain to where roads were underwater, landslides were definitely in full effect, and there was so many instances where trees were simply being uprooted, not because of the strong winds with Philippe, but because we had so much rain falling in certain areas that the soil naturally lifted up and could not support the trunks of all these trees that have collapsed in some of the localized areas where they saw most of our higher intensity convective complexes move through. But looking at this satellite, you would think the storm was somewhere in the Eastern Caribbean, but to tell you the truth, looking at this vis shot, our center is well off to the north-northwest of all of its core convection, and as a result, we've started to see some weakening in the storm, winds down to 45 miles an hour, and unless this thing gets its act together quick, I anticipate this is going to continue to weaken. At least another couple miles an hour, see a little bit more filling in the center of circulation. Yesterday, however, because the storm continued to move to the north and northwest, a lot of the cold pools that were induced by the outflows, the collapsing thunderstorms near the center of circulation, helped to propagate most of the convection to the west. And you can see that a lot of that thunderstorm activity is still moving off to the west, but because we're not seeing too much in the way of those pulse-like storms popping off. We're not seeing a rapid development of thunderstorms and then a collapse just as fast as they formed. You're starting to see most of that upper level cloud cover. The cirrus is starting to dissipate. A lot of those higher cloud tops, the cumulonimbus indications here are really starting to wash themselves out. So guys, I think it's safe to say the worst is just about over. Yes, we had to endure about 12 hours of really potent rainfall, a tremendous lightning show put on by Tropical Storm Philippe, but the worst is just about over. In fact, what's wild to imagine is because because we saw so much lightning going on in this storm overnight, I've been seeing videos online. I've also seen some of the reconnaissance aircraft videos that have been posted on their social media. That leads me to suspect a lot of these thunderstorms were actually not induced by Tropical Storm Philippe. Unfortunately, the shear coupled with all the different outflow boundaries from underneath that cirrus dense overcast that's kind of covering them, even on this satellite shot, you can get a really brief glimpse of what looks to be an outflow boundary kicking off to the west right there that's helping to try to keep thunderstorms flaring up near what's left of this convective complex. That is actually what helped contribute to a lot of the heavy rainfall we saw. It wasn't the tropical storm so much. All these different thunderstorms trying to get some upward vertical motion with them and then collapsing due in part to the dry air intrusion and the shear in the mid to upper levels is actually what caused these storms to train or sort of park themselves and rain out over the Lesser Antilles, particularly the Leeward Islands. The Windward Islands did see some impacts and you can see that there are still some areas of thunderstorms trying to kick off underneath where the main energy source is for this storm. But again, guys, everything's going to continue to move off to the west. And with Philippe weakening and looking as disgusting as it does on satellite, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot in the way of intense impacts as we go through the rest of the day today and into tomorrow, which is great news for us who were impacted by all the flood conditions we saw throughout the night. It was a very intense evening. I'll tell you that much. Next stop, as I mentioned on Instagram, for those of you who follow me, if not, please take a look at WX Center underscore Nazario. I'll link it right down here if you guys are watching this video or right over here, I should say. But next stop is going to be Bermuda. We have a very interesting situation going on with Bermuda. And it actually does seem a little bit more favorable than what we saw yesterday despite Ensemble Agreement putting it right into the Bermuda Island. With as bad as Philippe looks on satellite and the fact that he's going to interact with that breakaway jet energy, that little cold pocket that works its way out of the northeast down to kind of wrap him up in its larger scale vortex, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of intensification with Philippe. We could see a little bit of back building once it gets out of that sheared environment, gets over the warm waters of the central Atlantic. We could maybe see him re-intensify into a mid, maybe even a high-end tropical storm. I'm kind of reaching at this point, but we could see a little bit of steady intensification before interacting with Bermuda and getting pulled in by that breakaway jet energy frontal system down at the surface. So a very interesting phenomena getting ready to take place. They're going to interact with each other once again. I'm not going to use the F word, the Fujiwara effect, because we're not looking at two different tropical systems. It'll be tropical versus baroclinic, barotropic. What that'll do is still intensify some of the phenomena we see with Bermuda. You could see some elevated winds, large amounts of rainfall with this as the two systems begin to interact and then they're going to boomerang kind of in unison to the north to where we could see some impacts in the Nova Scotia main area, even a little further off to the east near Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, the same general area where Lee impacted. Although again, this could be more of a rainmaker. Some of the models do want to intensify it once it picks up jet support. So it will be post-tropical in nature. So we could still see some enhanced activity with it, but nothing catastrophic guys. It's more of a rainmaker with some elevated winds. I 
want to anticipate that honestly post-tropical cyclone Lee by the time he made his way up into that region was a little bit worse than what some of our models are indicating here but naturally because of the forward progress and because we have more land entities in its path we're going to keep a close eye on it but right now things are looking a little bit better at least real time in terms of the way Philippe is looking structurally his intensity having dropped as opposed to strengthened as what we were initially anticipating through the back end of last week so just bears monitoring but thankfully for the Caribbean nations the worst is just about over and we're going to keep an eye on what's to come for the next five to seven days for Bermuda and then eventually 10 days out for the northeastern regions. All right, truthfully, I don't have a lot of groundbreaking updates for you guys today. We're still waiting and seeing what's happening in the Gulf. We're waiting on our upstream features, i.e. the trough I talked about yesterday, whether or not our upper level anti-cyclone is going to take shape over Mexico or over the Gulf and the Caribbean more so. These are going to be the main dynamics over North America and out in the Pacific that could help really trigger some good development out in the Gulf of Mexico. However, some of the ensembles are definitely pinging on a greater chance or greater agreement that there will be something out there, whether it be a low pressure or an actual tropical cyclone, it's still a little early to tell. The reason I have the Canadian model on the left and the GFS on the right here, however, is because we not only have another tropical wave headed towards our Lesser Antilles to affect some of the areas already afflicted by the floodwaters induced by Philippe's thunderstorm activity, we could get another round of tropical rainfall here Thursday into Friday and maybe even parts of Saturday. Some of the models early this morning want to pick up that thing's forward progress and move it in a little earlier so we could see sometime mid in the day Thursday this week, two days from now, an increase in rain chances, especially for our windward island nations. I also want to indicate that if you remember CPC's discussion I showed you guys on a few segments ago, mentioning that the main development region could see a sudden resurgence in activity. Today, both our 12Z Canadian and GFS models are highlighting a potential threat out there. You can see on both of our models, I'll use my black pen so you guys can see it a little clearer. We have two separate circulation centers out there, both in the Canadian model model and we have another developing circulation center on the GFS. As you track these through time, you can see that the Canadian model wants to pull it to the north. It's anticipating a bit of weakness in our overall pattern right in through here, so this could be another fish storm, as we've seen pretty predominantly through the heart of the season, but on the GFS, we're seeing something totally different. You can see in the precipitable water values here, we actually have high pressure building in across a large majority of the Atlantic. You have a little bit of a weakness induced right in through here, but it doesn't look like the GFS wants to track it in that area, and the only reason I'm bringing it up, guys, I know this is one run of the GFS, but we just had you guys out in the Lesser Antilles hammered by those thunderstorms with Tropical Storm Philippe. So when I see something like this on top of that upcoming tropical wave to help keep a lot of moisture and a lot of rainfall in your area, this concerns me. As you go towards the end of the GFS run, you could see a potent hurricane making its way into the Leeward Islands. This is only one run. The ensembles have been highlighting some development over the last three days now, albeit they're scattered. There's really no general consensus on where it's going, but the fact that we have have a 12Z hot model run indicating a potential tropical storm, if not a hurricane, through our Lesser Antilles that has me watching for you guys. We have that tropical wave Thursday into Friday, and we may have one other piece of the puzzle working its way in next week. So I'm keeping an eye out for you guys. This could be a dangerous situation if it continues to trend, albeit because of the circumstances we're dealing with right now. You guys are getting hammered by Tropical Storm Philippe. We don't need anything of this magnitude on the near distant horizon. I don't mean to hype it up, but just because it's out there in the Canadian Canadian models also showing an MDR system, it bears monitoring. You can also see once again on both models that right about at the same time, Friday the 13th weekend, we have a surge of tropical moisture out over the Gulf of Mexico with the Canadian model spinning up an organized low pressure center. The GFS has been on and off. Last night, we actually had indications of a potential high-end tropical storm or even a low-grade hurricane making its way towards central Florida. Well, once again, the GFS has done the old dipsy doo -dah and turned itself upside down, and now we're looking at a weaker system pushing across the Gulf, potentially into the New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama area. So again, we're still pretty far out. We're going to see this waxing and waning with our deterministic products. So ensembles are going to continue to be our best friend, and that's where we're going next. This morning, the Euro actually has some pretty good probabilistic charts indicating we do have something we need to start keeping an eye on, and we need to start putting a little more attention into. This is our tropical depression probability with the Euro last night. Zero Z, 12 Z, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, is still coming in. I'll take a look at that as well, and if I see anything pressing, I'll up Date you guys, but zero Z as you go towards the back end of the run, look at how high our probabilities start to go up right in that Bay of Campeche, all the way up to the 40 to 45, approaching that 50% threshold, according to the Euro, that we could see tropical depression like conditions or tropical depression formation right in this same general area as our other models have been highlighting. And then take a look at this bad boy. We've moved over to the zero Z tropical storm probability chart, and as you go 
towards the very end of the loop, same time we saw those higher chances for tropical depression formation, we're actually seeing the euro increasing the chances we could see a tropical storm form and potentially track off towards the same general area as we saw Idalia back in August or come full east-northeast across the state of Florida headed towards the Tampa St. Pete area. A lot of the ensembles are in agreement with this as well. I'll take you to those here in a moment. All right, here are euro ensembles for 0Z. Again, unfortunately, 12Z isn't in. We have been seeing a consistent uptick in these ensembles. For the last several days, I haven't mentioned too much of euro because there's been a difference between 0 and 12Z almost night and day. 0Z, there's something. 12Z, we've backed off. Then 0Z, there's something. 12Z, we've backed off. Today, that's not the case. Yesterday at 0Z, we saw an uptick. 12Z, we saw even more. And then 0Z this morning, we saw a couple more members jump on board. So as you go through time, pay attention closely to the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean to an extent, and look at how many ensemble members we have pinging on development now, headed right towards those same areas I mentioned with the probability charts. And unfortunately, you can see a general trend off to the east-northeast, putting it right towards the good old sunshine state as maybe a tropical storm or even a low-end hurricane, with some of these blue ensemble members indicating a pressure of 999 all the way down to 980 millibars. So definitely something to keep on our radars. We're not 110% sold on a tropical system forming. As I mentioned, we have the trough, the upper ridge, we have the frontal system, we have high pressure at the surface, a lot of moving parts. And that's what I've been carefully dissecting every single day before I make a video like this for you guys. Moving along to the 12Z GFS ensembles, you can see we do have all of these loaded in for the most part, and I'm looking at both the Gulf as well as the main development region. You can see a lot of tremendous agreement that some lowering pressure, some organized low pressure centers are going to form in the Gulf to its entirety, as well as seeing some ensemble members pinging on our main development region system out here. Some want to track it due west towards the leeward windward islands others want to take it to the north so it's all a matter of timing this is towards the very back end of the run so we have a lot of lead time to get a better handle on what's happening here but some of the official sources are thinking that the activity in the main development region isn't quite going to subside yet we're going to have a downward trend in terms of how many waves we have coming off of africa forming near the cabo verde islands and moving west northwest but it doesn't mean we can rule them out altogether and it goes to show that a few of our models are definitely highlighting the chance for tropical development out there so let's Lesser Antilles, I'm watching for you all. Caribbean, I'm definitely watching for you all. To wrap up this video segment, guys, I know we kind of blasted through this. Again, I don't have anything fundamental to communicate to you guys that's very different from 24, 36 hours ago, so I'm kind of broad brushing it, if you will. If there was anything jumping out at me, I would definitely let you know. I'm kind of go look at the upper levels real fast because I wanted to really quickly break down what it is I'm closely investigating. As you go through the European model loop, this is 0Z once again. We're really watching closely what happens in the East Pack and what happens off the coast of California, Baja, California. You can see that trough digging in as we get towards the back end of the run. You can see both of our tropical entities at the very bottom of the screen. Here's one invest area that's expected to develop any moment now. And then we have our next invest area we talked about yesterday on Weather Center Nazario. That secondary system off the Mexican coastline is what's likely to be picked up by our trough. And you can see, once I clear the ink out of the way, I go to the very tail end, you can see that energy sucked up over Mexico and then kicked out over the Gulf of Mexico. So I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we get a model run or two of the Euro deterministic run indicating something forming up over the Gulf of Mexico within the next day or two. It might not happen yet because this is 240 hours out at 0Z. Maybe by tonight, if not tomorrow, we could have something popping off and something trying to get its act together in the Gulf on the Euro model itself. Those are going to be the moving pieces, our fall frontal system, the high pressure at the surface kind of dictating what happens with that frontal energy, the trough off the Pacific coastline, as well as our two tropical systems in the East Pack. Again, a lot of moving pieces, a whole puzzle I'm trying to configure for you guys before I pump these episodes out to you, but we're going to go ahead and wrap up there. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. This is going to conclude Tuesday's segment of Weather Center Nazario. I really appreciate all your continued support. Thank you again for watching and joining me today on Tuesday. You can expect me back once again at 6 p.m. for a full segment of Weather Center Nazario tomorrow and at 8 p.m. our Wednesday night tropics talk where we'll discuss a little more casually but more in-depth what it is I'm looking at in the upper air and lower air pattern across North America and the entire tropical AOR for that matter. I hope everything is great for everyone watching and for those of you who are not watching or watching from the Lesser Antilles from the Caribbean islands, our hearts and prayers go out to you guys. We're definitely keeping an eye on the tropics because it looks like we may not be done yet. And I'm not trying to alarm anybody, but whenever I see something out there, especially for areas already currently afflicted by bad weather, it's definitely worth talking about. And we're going to keep you up to date. And I know a lot of other entities in the weather community across social media are also keeping you in our minds as well. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.